All right. Well, it's good to see everybody. Great to be able to come to church uh, in January and see weeds that are growing because the weather is so warm. So, uh, but it's good to see you here tonight. Um, believe in God for, for things to continue as we go forward in this year. Uh, just one quick announcement. Remember, uh, right after service on Sunday, we'll be having a members meeting over in, uh, in the uh, uh, education building. So if you can be there, be a part of that. January, we're reading through the book of Proverbs. Remember that. Read a chapter a day. Challenges our thoughts. Just talking to someone before service. We got to get our thoughts renewed to what the word says. Amen. And so that turns our mind around, gives us godly thoughts, builds our faith, and then that helps us to predict our future uh, that we will have the, our seeds growing in us to produce the fruit that we need for the future. So good to see everyone here tonight. Um, another quick announcement be lookout, be on the lookout for opportunities to demonstrate God's love. There's going to be a lot of those opportunities in the days ahead. Amen. And so we're going to be ready for those and looking forward to those opportunities to share the love of God with people that we come into contact with in the days ahead. And so we're expecting good things. God is at work. We trust that he is moving and believing that he is demonstrating his goodness and greatness in, in this world today because we're here, the church of Jesus Christ. And we're the triumphant, victorious church. Amen. 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 And so let's stand tonight. Let's worship the Lord. Let's expect his spirit to empower us so that we can do the work he's called us to do. Hallelujah. for us. 
us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Blessed Redeemer, Savior and friend, hope of salvation, beginning and end. We could never be silent. We bring you.
moments where we we just close out the world we control our thoughts we focus on the resurrected one we come into that throne room of grace and Lord we we sense the strength that comes into our life by knowing you trusting in you alone having you as our foundation 
And so, Lord, in this moment, we just thank you that right now the Spirit of the Lord is, is infusing us with fresh strength, is giving us spiritual insight and wisdom to live our life that is pleasing to you, but also is, is, is above reproach. The enemy has no control over us. We thank you, Father, that the enemy's attacks are defeated every single time in our life because of the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the shield of faith that is able to quench every attack of the enemy in our life. We listen intently to the inward voice of the Holy Spirit who gives us the wisdom and the guidance to be able to repel and to be able to continue to go forward in this kingdom plan you have for us. Father, give us again that fresh revelation of the victorious, triumphant church that we are a part of. But as we go forward, we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. We're not moved by what we hear. But we are, dear God, moved by your word that is inside of us and is fulfilling us. So, Lord, we just ask that right now for that fresh move of your spirit on this church to accomplish your goal and your glory. Lord, we pray for the youth that are meeting tonight. We thank you that you are sowing good seeds into their hearts so that they are able, dear God, to have truth in them, building them up, bringing them together with godly influence for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're close enough to tell to someone, look them in the eye and say, you're victorious. You, you are victorious. You are victorious. Did you turn the heat up when you came over tonight? Okay. Turned up just a tad more, I think, and just a little cool. Uh, the victorious Lord Jesus Christ has a victorious church that we're a part of. Amen? And, uh, and so you got to do this with, with, with faith, following after the Lord, you know, the Lord in our life. But we're going to do it. We're going to be faith people. And if you're watching online, we appreciate your presence and your uh, tuning in to what God is doing. Um, but he's got something for us to do in this day and this age. Sunday, I left you with a question, and I'm just going to revisit it tonight and then move on from it. And it's simply this thought that's stirring over on the inside of us. Before we, we hear a word for 2021, the question we have is, do we have the courage and the commitment to do what God has asked us to do? Do we have the courage and commitment to do what God will ask us to do, to follow after him no matter what comes. Are you willing to do whatever God asks of you? I think sometimes we get anxious to hear a word for a year and then we just expect it to come to pass. But much of the word that God gives us is conditional on our obedience of the word. God had given them the promised land, but they had to be obedient and courageous enough and committed enough to go in and to possess the land. And so before we go and try to get a prophetic word for the year, we need to search our hearts afresh and say, am I ready to follow after the Lord no matter what this year to come? Am I committed and do I have the courage to follow after him? And I'll tell you, just from my own experience, I know that oftentimes that's more of internal obedience of things that need to change in my personal life than it is something on the outside that he's going to call me to go and to do and to be a part of in this life. And so listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives personally, individually. And tonight's message that I have for you, if you want to get your Bibles out, turn to Revelation chapter 3 as the Spirit of God would speak to the churches I don't, have a, I don't have a title for tonight's message. I don't, I don't know where we got along to, we had to have titles for messages, and there's nothing wrong with that, nothing bad with that, but sometimes you can struggle for a long time trying to call, come up with a catchy title for something. Let's just, I just want to get to the word tonight and stir on the inside of us as uh, we, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in this day and age with uh, the situations that we're facing, uh, problems, as I mentioned Sunday, they, they didn't all go away just because we flipped the calendar. If anything, in some ways, they have intensified, um, they have polarized. Um, there seems to be more misunderstanding, more hurt, more division. Um, and, and we need to get back to the good news of the truth of God's word and make sure that is the main focus for our life is the word of God. 
that that is the main focus, that's the main subject, that's the main topic in our lives is God's word and the good news about Jesus Christ and reaching the world that is around us. In a moment, we're going to look here at Revelation chapter 3, and, and, and we'll uh, just be reading through this portion of Scripture and, 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 and looking at what the Word of God has to say to the church. But before we get to that, I just want to say that just as a pastor at this particular time, and just scribbled down a couple of thoughts with the, the condition of just our nation, not, not just what happened today, but the, the, our nation at this particular time. And... And it's sad to see Christians that are more making statements and accusations than making space for holy conversation. And I just want us to, to, to make sure that we're checking our hearts. I, I can't, I'm not responsible for somebody else other than me and this flock. And I want to make sure that we have a place in our lives that we're not just making blank statements or making accusations but we have a space for holy conversation. Could you turn to your neighbor and just tell him with a smile or twinkle in the eye and just tell him you're not perfect. Just, you just tell him you're, you're not perfect. You're not perfect. That may be a word of knowledge for somebody. I don't know right there. That, that may be a revelation into somebody's life. But as Christians, we are not called to be perfect that's why we must constantly be in a repentive mode. Because if I'm not perfect, then I'm going to make some mistakes or make some wrong decisions along the way. So I have to constantly be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit or my wife in the areas that I need to repent, that I need to change. And before it becomes a repentance of, of ripping of, of of sackcloth and ashes in our life, and it's like, oh my gosh, how did I get here? It needs to be gentle repentance constantly in our life that we're staying on course as we follow after the Lord in our life. It is important in this day and age that the church move in the realm that we have the most influence, and that is the supernatural realm. It is important for us to understand that we take things to the highest court in the land that is the throne room of grace first and foremost. And we continue to be people that are deep in intercession for our nation, that we are people of prayer, people of faith, and people that still believe that God is con in control of our lives and can use us in this day and in this age. We must be people of faith. We must call on God to move in our nation more than ever in our life. But folks, we must guard our hearts against any toxic nature of this world that is around us. We must guard our hearts against the, the toxic nature of hatred or pride, of, of, of revenge or superiority. We must make sure that we guard our hearts because if we don't guard our hearts and we allow the toxins of the world to get in us, our words will have no power in them. They will have no life in them. Excuse me. They'll have power, just the wrong power. Our words will not have life in them. And we must make sure that we are speaking words of life to the world that is around us. So my prayer, and what I've been praying not just for this church, but for our nation, because I believe that God can still work in our nation. I believe that we must have a move of God in our country. I've been praying, and you've heard it in my prayers, that God would move one more time in this nation. That he would move one more time, and that his church, that would be once again be called the house of God. That his presence would be not just in this building, but there would be a sense in our community that those that gather in this place would sense that we are the people of God. That it's not about a denomination, about an affiliation, but it is about a relationship, and those people know God, and those people have their prayers answered. That this would be known as a house of God, not just a church, 
I've, I've said it before and had conversation just beforehand. That word church is getting too confusing in this world today. I want you to know very clearly that the Bible declares we pray to no other God other than the Lord God the Almighty. There is one God and we pray to him alone. So we must understand in this day and age we are not trying to, to, to be superior in our philosophy or our theology. We just need to stay biblical in who we are and cry out for God to move one more time in this world that the culture would see this as a mighty move of what God can do to reach the world that is around us and that he would heal the sick, raise the dead, and the manifestations of the power of God would be greater than that of the world that is against us. The church needs to be in unity. And I'm talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, that we would be one as he is one. I'm not saying that we need to be in uniformity, but we need to be in unity with him. We need to be hearing God in our lives and experiencing him in our lives and, and, and allowing him to lead and guide us. Our foundation is on Jesus Christ, the one Savior, the one Redeemer that reached out to the whole world. That's our foundation. Our enemy is Satan. That's who our enemy is, that we must resist and stand against. And our purpose is to glorify God. Our purpose is to continue to stand against the kingdom of darkness. And our purpose is still to reach the lost people that are around us in this world. So, so we ask for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We ask for a fresh renewing of our minds on the purpose, the divine purpose of why the church of Jesus Christ is on this earth and our part of being a part of that in this day and age. We ask for healing in emotional area where people are raw and they're offended and they're hurt and they need to experience the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ spirit, soul, and body in their lives. That just as I believe that there are people that need to experience the healing power in their physical bodies, I believe that there's some emotional things in people's lives. It needs to be healed and restored and made whole in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day and age in which Jesus put us. None of us chose to be here in this day. But we did say we choose to follow after Jesus in this day. And if we have made that choice, if we have made that statement, if we've made that declaration, then we need to, be make, uh, to make sure that we are living up with the truths of God's word in the way that we're living our life for his cause, for his purpose, and to be his representative in this day and age. And so church, Revelation chapter 3 I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Translation. It'll be a little bit different to us, maybe in the way it sounds to us or, or whatever, but I want to read this to us. This is written to a particular church, but as you go through here, and especially at the end of it, it reminds us that all churches can learn from this. It is specific, speaking specifically to them, but we can all learn from them. So here, Revelation chapter 3, here we are. And it says, and to the angel, the messenger of the assembly, the church in Sardis, write, these are the words from him who has the seven spirits, the sevenfold um, Holy Spirit, or the seven aspects of the one Holy Spirit, and the seven stars. I know your record and what you're doing. You are supposed to be alive, but in reality, you're dead. Rouse yourself. Keep awake. Strengthen it and invigorate what remains and, in so, and, and, and is on the point of dying. For I have not found a thing that you have done out of your own works, meeting the requirements of my God or perfect in his sight. Verse 3. So call to mind the lesson you received and heard. Continually lay them to heart and obey them and repent. Can everyone say repent? repent. It is a changing in the direction of the things that we're doing. Repent. In case you will not arouse yourself and keep awake and watch, I will come unto you like a thief. 
and you will not know or, or, or suspect at what hour I will come. Yet you will still have a few people or persons named in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, and they shall be worthy and deserving. Thus shall he who conquered is victorious be clad in white garments, and I will not erase or blot out their name from the book of life. I will acknowledge them as mine, and I will confess their names openly before my Father and before his holy angels. He who is able to hear, let him listen to and heed what the Holy Spirit says to the assembly and to the churches. I really encourage you to take that home and maybe read over that a little bit slower in your own life and listening to the Holy Spirit. It's not that, that there is some huge adjustment that I'm saying that God is speaking to us particularly about, but I think that there, this reveals to us that any church, any individual can start out on the right path, and if we're not careful, we get going along and we start doing things our own way or for our own purposes, and we need to repent, we need to get back to what is really the fire of God and the life of God that is in our lives. Again, I'm not saying that, 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 that we're all going to hell here in the room. I'm just saying, let's make sure that we're all heading directly to heaven in our lives and our purpose is of following after Christ. As we read this, he's saying, if you're able to hear this, if you're listening to it, if you're wanting to hear this, if you're wanting to make these changes in your life, if you're, if you're wanting to keep on keeping in a direction that's pleasing to the Father and what you're doing, then listen intently and take heed to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. This is what I want you to do. Don't just listen to Pastor Dennis. Don't just listen to a, your favorite preacher or prophet or individual or best friend. I want you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit yourself. I want you to crave that voice on the inside that you know that is God speaking directly to you about situations, things that you need to repent of, things that you need to change, things that you need to change in purpose and perspective in your own individual life, and that you are walking in a line of obedience that is pleasing to God in this day and this age. That if we're going to go and do what God has called the church in this day to do, we have to have a whole heart following after him. And while we're doing it, God, listen to me, this whole, this, this, what we just read here, Jesus coming again, he said, I'll come. If you're not listening, if you're not listening, I'll come like a thief in the night. I'll come when you weren't expecting it. It's not that I'm hiding things from you. You're just not aware of it. You're not aware of it. Does anybody here want to miss the return of Jesus Christ? Anybody here want to just, uh, just maybe uh, stay a little bit longer in this world and just enjoy it for a few more years as it continues to get worse? No. But I want you to know that God and, and the word here tonight, that, that he's not trying to scare us. God wants to prepare us for the coming of Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be afraid that we're going to miss out we just need to make sure that we are prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. And there's times we get so consumed with life that we lose our perspective of being prepared for Jesus coming and what are we really doing in this life. Our purpose as the body of Christ here on this earth is not to see how much you can accumulate. It's not to see how comfortable you can be. It's not even to see how safe you can be. The purpose of the church, and this is just a moment for us to just reflect in our own lives individually. The purpose of the church has not changed since Jesus established it. We are still here to reveal the glory of God. You have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. And the Scripture tells us that it was the glory of God that raised Christ from the dead. And that same glory, that same spirit of God lives in our lives and we should be radiating that glory in our lives. We should be demonstrating that glory in the way that we live our life. It is for his glory that we live. We live out of the, the joy of the resurrection. We live out of the, the, the glory that comes into our lives that we not only get to go to heaven, but but Satan's power and the penalty of sin has been broken over our lives. Isn't that good news for us? 
that the penalty of sin has been broken by the glory of God, but also the power of sin, the power to keep us sinning has been broken also. I don't have to sin. Turn to your neighbor again, just tell him, you don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. And you see, when we, by the way we live, we either give glory to God when we say no to sin, or we give glory to the flesh when we say yes to sin. We are glorifying one or the other. So the church is to still, in this day and in this age, we are supposed to be revealing his glory in the way that we live. So that means that if we have sin in our life, if we have bondages in our life, habits in our life, addictions in our life, it isn't feeling bad about it, it doesn't change anything. It's where we stop and we say, I'm going to repent. I am going to change my direction. I am going to start living to give God glory, not the flesh. And I want you to know that every time you repent and you turn away from the things of this world, the desires of the flesh, the things of this world, and you turn towards God, you are always turning away from something that's less than what you're going to be turning towards, and that is the greatness of God in our lives. It's always a, a, a better deal when we turn to God in our lives. So we need to demonstrate the glory of the Lord. The church and the purpose of the church is still the same, that we are here to resist the forces of the devil. We are here to reveal the glory of God and resist the forces of the devil. If that's our purpose for being here, then we ought to be whooping up on some demons in our life. We ought to be confronting the kingdom of darkness. We ought to be kicking on them gates of hell that cannot prevail against us. We should not be looking for a place to retreat to. We should always be advancing in our life in the kingdom of God. You know, it's, it's interesting, but I, I believe it's on the Australian flag is the, um, or one of their, their, you know, we've got the American eagle. I think the emu is one of, is the uh, Australians. I'm pulling that one out. Um, everybody's uh, fact-checking me real quick, and, but... Um, but we'll just say it this way. One of the interesting things about the emu, the big ugly bird, it doesn't go backwards. It doesn't have the ability to go backwards. It always goes forward. And folks, we might not look the best on the outside, but if you just got a, 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 a determination on the inside, I'm not going back. The, the, whatever the enemy throws at me, I'm not going back. I may pause for a moment. I may re regroup, I may have to, 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 to fortify, but I will not flee. I will not back off. I will continue to go forward. I will continue to push against the kingdom of darkness, not just for myself, but there's people that need to be set free. There's people that need to be delivered. There are people that need someone like you that knows how to confront the kingdom of darkness and win. Turn to your other neighbor, because this one's going to be for them. Turn to your other neighbor and say, in Christ you're a winner. You, you are, I, I could say it. And then turn to your other neighbor, turn to your other neighbor and just tell them, you're a real winner. You're a real winner, all right? You're a, what do we, we are, we, we've got to continue to be going forward. Go forward, go forward, go forward. Jesus is Lord in our lives. And the church needs to understand that we're not here to just make things comfortable. We are here to confront the kingdom of darkness. And so we are, the purpose is to reveal his glory, to resist the forces of evil. And here it is, folks. We are to be still continually reaching out to the lost and giving them the hope of the gospel. This is where we oftentimes fail. We're not reaching to the lost. We, are, we, have, we, have, we have reached around ourselves. We have, we have reached around our family. We have reached around our church. Or, or we've just become very, our, our arms have become short. Uh, we've become more like a, 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 one of those, you know, a, a trans, one of the, what's the bad dinosaur, the big ugly one that eats the little ones? Tyrannosaurus, you know. He, he, he's big and he's ugly and he's got a terrible bite. But he, he's got really short arms and he can't do much with them. Church, we should have these long arms that reach out to those that are in darkness 
those that are in captivity, that we should be reaching out with love to them and drawing them in, not just trying to roar and be fearful. We need to deal with the kingdom of darkness, but we need to reach the lost and bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The purpose of the church on the earth is still to not just wait till Jesus comes so we can go to heaven, but we are preparing others, at least giving them the opportunity. You understand that when Jesus has talked to the church here and telling them to get ready for his return, that getting ready for his return means that they should be living out of his glory, they should be resisting the kingdom of darkness, and they should be reaching out to the lost. But you see, salvation in our life prepares us for a life of being equipped so that we're ready for the coming of Jesus. Folks, prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is not just that you came to this altar and prayed a prayer one day, it is the way you're living every day. It is the way we live every day of our life. And that doesn't mean that on Monday you were ready for Jesus to come, but on Tuesday you weren't, and then Wednesday you were, and then Thursday you weren't. But it is, is that we are keeping ourselves in a, in a way that we are living for his glory, demonstrating his presence in our life, that we are looking for opportunities to push back the kingdom of darkness and looking for those people around us that we can share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with. The fact is that the enemy will try to keep us from this purpose. The enemy will come into our lives and come into to the churches and will try to replace our divine purpose and mission with cheap excuses and replacements. The enemy will try to give us the excuse of compliance. Well, we can't do that because it's illegal. We can't do that because I don't have the abilities. I'm limited to do that. Folks, no matter where you are, whether you're in North Korea or whether you're in the Vatican in Italy, your responsibility is to reveal the glory of God to resist the kingdom of darkness and reach the lost that are around you. If it ever becomes illegal to do one of those things, you have the higher permission from God's word and the mandate that I need to be prepared to go and to do whatever God has called me to do. I want to be prepared for Jesus' coming, whatever it costs me here on this earth. So compliance is not an excuse that we can have. Complacency is one of those things that the enemy brings into our lives where we become self-satisfied, where we become about self-gratification, where I'm satisfied, and let's just be honest, if we had to dig deep into our hearts, do we really care that people are going to hell? Do we really care that there are people that don't know the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? We can have all kinds of statements and accusations about the virus, but the fact is, People are dying and they're going to hell. Are we, do we care about that? Do we reach out to people that are around us? I'm not saying that you have to go find a, a sick ward somewhere, but it, wouldn't it be much better if we make sure we let them know about Jesus before someone gets cancer, before someone gets sick, before they're put in a place of isolation, that we are willing to, to care and to reach out to the world that is around us. Complacency. We put it off. That somebody else will do it. Somebody else has got those giftings. Folks, if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you're born again, you have the gift of evangelism. Amen? If you're close enough to them, turn touch your neighbor, lay hands on them and say, I, I impart the gift of evangelism in your life. Just tell them. I impart... No one is doing it. Come on now. I can see we're in disobedience right now. The gift of evangelism. You can say right now, someone laid their hands on me. Well, I want you to know that when the Holy Spirit came upon you, he is the evangelistic spirit. That he came from the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus came to save the whole world. And he wants to use the church. Now, there's some that be used in different ways, in different forms, but there's people that you contact, people you work with, people you live around, people that you know that I'll never have a chance to preach a sermon to, but you can reach them, and you must reach them. 
You must look for those opportunities. You must seize those moments to sow into their lives and let them know that you care about them and you reach into their lives. That we look for people that are hurting, people that are isolated, people that are, are emotionally right now are starving because they, 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 they don't have people around them. What can you do right now to step out of you and reach into their lives? Complacency is where the enemy likes to tell the church, it's okay, you're okay, you don't need to change, you're better than most, you don't need to do any more. Matter of fact, you do more than most, you don't need to do any more. There's always more we can do with God in our life. I'm glad Jesus didn't wake up one morning and say, I've done enough. I'm just going to sit here on the seashore and just be listening to, to the ocean come and go and just wait until that day that I have to go to the cross. No, he constantly went and he reached the world that was around him. He couldn't even eat with people without people wanting to press into his life and get what they needed in, out of his life. He was not complacent. He was aggressive in the way that he lived his life. He's the example that we need to be living also. Of course, I already kind of alluded to the, the other one that the enemy tries to bring into our life, and that's a lack of compassion. We really don't care. It's a terrible plague that's on the church right now. A lack of compassion. Caring one for another. Truly loving one another. How in the world are we going to love our neighbor when we don't love one another in the body of Christ? How in the world are we going to love our enemies when we don't even have unity in the body of Christ? How are we going to love the world when we don't even love the one that sleeps in the bed right beside us? It's time for us to understand that there needs to be a move of the love of God in us and through us in this day and age. That we're going to be people that are moved by compassion. How many times we look in the King James where it says, and, and Jesus was moved with compassion. When's the last time compassion moved you to reach into someone's life? Compassion, seeing that hurting person, you say, I got to do something about it. Compassion stirred you on the inside so much that it, it was beyond your natural ability. It was beyond your limits of what you could do. But you thought, I've got to do something. Somebody's got to do something here. And I'm going to do something in their lives. And I'm going to expect whatever I do to God to anoint that and something can really then happen out of that. But here's the, fo the truth, folks. If you don't do something, then God's going to do nothing. Because he uses us in this day and age. He uses his church, his body, to reach the world that is around us. And compassion should be the main motivation and the main force that moves us. For God so loved the world, he moved to change that situation. And so he sent Jesus, and out of Jesus' obedience, God was able to move and transform and change the world. I'm excited to be about, to, about the master's business. I've got some repenting to do in my life. I've got some changes to do in my life. I've got some areas that I need to, to, to let down and, and leave alone and some others that, that I need to, to go after. But folks, if we're not willing to repent, if we're not willing to change, you're just going to have what you got. I don't know about you. I'm not satisfied with where I am with God. I'm not satisfied with the results that I'm having with God. I'm not satisfied with the number of people that are coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm not satisfied with these things, and so I need to change. I need to change. You can say it right now. Point your finger at me and tell me, Pastor, you need to change. I'll take it. I'll receive it. I know it. I need to change. The transformation. And why is that? Well, one, because I, I'm supposed to, yes, but I want to be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, and we've got just a couple of moments here to be able to, to get into just, I'm sorry, I preached longer than what I thought, and some of this had stirred on the inside of hope, all of us. But there, that there needs to be a fresh stirring in the church that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. 
Not just the world, the church needs to be... The, the, the scripture we read there in Rome, excuse me, Revelation 3, he was writing to the church and he's saying, church, you're not ready for me to come back. And if I came right now, you would miss it completely because of all that you're involved in and what your life is after isn't anything about me. And so you need to repent, you need to change, refocus. This is a wonderful scripture and this whole chapter is a great one for you to go and to read through here. I encourage you to do so. But in Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading out the Amplified again, verse 1. This helps us to be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1, therefore, if, if, if you have been raised with Christ, is anyone here that's been raised with Christ Jesus? Anyone born again? You got to see some hands and then some others that need to come up to later. But uh, we, we've been raised with Christ. Have we forgotten that? You see, when we forget that, then we start to look around what is just around us instead of what is above us. Our perspective gets out of, out of whack. And when your perspective is out of whack, then what you take of as reality is out of whack. The reality is Jesus is seated as the resurrected, victorious, triumphant, personal Savior and Lord at the right hand of the Father God. And when I keep that perspective, things here, I want you to know they're fluid. They can change because the Almighty One is the one is the consistent in my life. So my emotions are guided by that. I don't wake up and say, oh, no, it's Monday, I got to go to work. I wake up and say, thank you, Jesus, you're still on the throne. I don't wake up thinking, oh, no, I got to go to the doctor today. I wonder what he's going to say. I wake up thinking, the Lord is still consistent in my life. I don't wake up and wonder who's going to be in the White House because I know who's on the throne and I'm going to keep trusting in him and not on humans here on this earth. Now we need to pray and I'm saying there's things that we need to do. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying our ultimate trust needs to be on the consistent in our life. And therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in the resurrection from the dead. Keep seeking these things that are above. It reveals to us there is the human temptation or possibility of imperfect individuals such as you and I to stop seeking that which is above. If we didn't have that potential, that he wouldn't have to say, keep seeking these things because it just automatically would happen in our lives. You ever been driving down the road and then you just take your eyes off the road for just a minute? You get one of those important phone calls, text, or you need to change the radio station or something happens and, and you take your eyes off the road and you look back and it just seems like everything's changed. Something runs in front of you, Someone stops in front of you. Something happens. And you think, man, I just took my eyes off for a minute. And then you get that what? You get that ad adrenaline rush. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to focus now. When I was, um, when I was, when I was dating Marilyn, and, and of course, um, she lived in, in Winfield, Iowa, and I, I lived uh, down by New London, Iowa, and there was quite a distance between the, 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 the drive. It was worth it. I'll testify. It was worth it. But um, I'm, I'm just not that good of a driver in a, in a good situation, but especially when it gets dark. Um, and boy, when I would drive home from Maryland's house at night, and uh, I would just, you know, catch, get one eye going, you know, and then you try to roll down the window, and then you turn up the heat because you'd be getting cold because the window was down. You'd try all these things to try to stay awake. But, and then you, you would, tires would go off the road for just a little bit, and then you'd wake up, and you'd have that adrenaline rush, and then you'd have a tendency to go back. You know what? That's kind of what happens when the Holy Spirit speaks to us about repentance. You kind of get a Holy Spirit adrenaline rush. You realize, I need to get back on the right path. And then we get going on that path for a while, and then if we're not careful, we start to dry, get drowsy again. And we start to, to drift again in our life. And so we have to be so careful. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, wake me up when I'm starting to, to spiritually get sleepy. Wake me up when I'm starting to, to drift from the path I'm supposed to be on and following. 
Keep seeking those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on things that are above, heavenly things, not things that are on this earth. I don't know that we have a real revelation of that. Because we can get really ticked off if things on this earth don't go the way we want them to go. We can get really emotionally upset, frustrated. We can, we can, we can write people, I mean, don't even send them a Christmas card this year because the way they treated me this year. We, we can write people off. We can get upset. We can get offended, get mad. I tell you what, you keep your eyes on Jesus, it's pretty difficult to get upset. It's pretty difficult to get mad. It's when he says here, keep your eyes habitually on things which are above, things that are heaven, not on things of this earth which have only temporary value. Wow. What do we really value in this life? In our lives, maybe we should say it this way. What has value to you? What has value in your life? Everything in this world has temporary value. Everything. Everything in this world has temporary value. Only that which is eternal has eternal value to it. You know, Marilyn and I, we, we kind of watch that um, Antiques Road Show. And sometimes they have the ones where, you know, in 2009, this thing was worth this much, and today it's worth this. And we always play the little game, is it up or is it down? You know, is this... Does this go up or then? And, and sometimes it goes up in value and sometimes it goes down in value. And, and, and they bring something there and they say, wow, that's worth this much, but if you wouldn't have polished it, it would have been worth twice that much, you know, or something like that. Everything of this earth fluctuates in value. It can go down. You could wake up tomorrow and the American dollar could be worth zero. Something could happen and the scripture actually tells us that in the last days, that bread is going to be more valuable than gold will be in the last days. Everything changes. And so if our, if our mind is fixed on just this world and not on what is what a true value, then we're going to be mixed up in our life too. And we're certainly not going to be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, verse 3, he says, For you died to this world, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We'll have to close there tonight. But I want to just ask you, is your life hid in Christ? Is he your identity, your significance, your purpose? Is he your mission is, is he the one revealing his glory in your life? When the enemy comes and knocks at your door, are you hid in Christ and, and you have the confidence that the Lord is with you and he's going to get you through the situation? When there comes an opportunity for you to share Jesus with someone around you, do you, do you freeze up and say, I don't know what I'll say to them? Or you just say, Lord, just give me some words to be able to say. Show me what I need to do. I'm not just going to drop into some script that I got memorized. I'm going to allow you to speak through me at this moment. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to prepare you. I'm here to prepare you so that others can be prepared also. Jesus is coming back for faithful servants, loyal to him, not to this world committed to his cause and what he is doing. Jesus is coming back for compassionate servants. Not ones that are abusing others or using them to achieve their goal, but realizing that we're in this together to accomplish his will, his plan. So as we close tonight, may tonight be a, a night where we just, just have that fresh consecration that fresh sense of repentance. Lord, if there's something I need to change, you know, I start to have to say, Lord, whatever I need to change, show it to me consistently so I can make those changes that are pleasing to you. 
I'm not here to please anyone else other than Jesus. And that's the one I want to follow after. That's the one I keep my eyes on. And that's the one who's coming back for me someday. And I'm going to be ready for it. Lord Jesus, prepare this church, this assembly, this, this group so that we will be a group that will have hearts of compassion, that we will be people that are aggressively pushing against the kingdom of darkness, that we will be people that are just amazed that your glory is seen in our lives, but that we are a church, an assembly, the ecclesia, those that are called out and called into but most of all, we'll hear your call when you call us from this earth and we'll be ready for your return. So Lord, in all of the chaos of this world, in all of its temptations, we repent, we change directions, and we focus on heaven and the fulfillment of your will in this day and age for your glory. And we thank you that we resist the devil his lies, his deceptions, his manipulations, so that we might do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Greater ones in you, go out there and make a difference to the world that are around. Go be that light that God's called you to be in this day and age. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being the incredible church of Jesus Christ.